What's going on guys, Billy here, and just like the DJI FPV drone, the Avada was built to help anyone that is brand new to flying FPV progressively build their skills to go from GPS-aided flight all the way to full manual flight in acro mode, but I think that the Avada is actually more well-suited for beginners over the DJI FPV drone. So just like with any other drone from DJI, we have different flight modes. In the case of the Avada, there are three, normal, sport, and manual. On the back of the FPV remote too, there's a switch that allows us to cycle through through these different modes. If you're instead using the motion controller, the mode button on the front will allow you to switch between normal and sport mode. Now right off the bat, if you go and try to flip into manual mode using your custom mode switch here on the backside of the FPV remote 2, you won't be able to. And that's because DJI disables it right out of the box, hoping that someone won't accidentally go into manual mode and then crash their drone. Because their thought process is if you go into the menu settings, if you find manual mode, and if you turn it on, you probably know what you're getting yourself into. Just to get it out of the way, we can enable manual mode by swiping right to bring up the menu through our goggles. Then we go to settings, then we go to remote controller, and then all the way at the bottom is a toggle that allows us to change it from the default sport mode into manual. Another thing that I wanna sneak in here before we get started, a great way to get comfortable with your drone even before flying it in the normal mode is through DJI's virtual flight app, which allows you to plug your phone into your goggles and then virtually fly the Avada or even the DJI FPV drone with your remote. It's a really great experience to help you get comfortable with the goggles and the controls and is probably a good starting point to get an understanding of what to expect before before you just go for it. So kind of taking a top-down look at the three different flight modes available here on the Avada, I'm kind of going to group together the normal and sport mode because they are very similar and differ from flying in full manual or acro in a couple of different ways. So first of all, when you're flying in normal or sport mode, it's basically the same experience as any GPS drone, like say the Mavic 3, the Mini 3, any of those drones that DJI sells as you've got position hold as well as altitude hold using the onboard GPS. And you've also got a set of sensors on the bottom that help you achieve position hold, especially if you're flying with no GPS. Just like I showed in my review of the Avada here, you can allow the drone to hover in place without providing any input on the sticks, which is something not many other FPV drones can do. You always have to be engaged on the sticks flying from when you take off until you land. So in our progression of working from GPS-aided flight all the way to full acro, our journey starts here with the normal flight mode. Now this is of course the slowest flight mode with a top speed of 18 miles an hour, which might seem very slow, but for a Cinewhoop is a good starting speed. That 18 miles an hour is going to feel very fast when you start flying in close proximity to surrounding obstacles and gives you the ability to do so by just flying it like a Mavic. If you want to stop and hover, you can do so by just taking your hands off of the sticks. Your altitude will be maintained and all the controls are just like you'd expect from a GPS drone. The one thing that you don't have here in the Avada is forward obstacle avoidance, which in all other drones would be turned on in this slower flight mode. So be wary of crashing. The good thing is that if you do, all you probably have to do is flip the drone right side up, take off and continue on with your flight. Now, something I should probably mention here is that all the video that you capture with the Avada is stabilized by a single axis mechanical gimbal that pitches up and down and then a layer of electronic image stabilization called Rocksteady is added onto your video so that it's just a little bit smoother. The reason I say this is because in the goggles, the view might be a little jumpy, and that's because you're looking at the feed right from the camera to get the shortest amount of lag as possible. If Rocksteady was applied in real time, the lag would increase, thus ruining the first person view, the first person flight. Now, when flying in normal, the drone's movements are fairly tame, so the footage is going to look super smooth, but because we only have a single axis gimbal, the horizon will still bank from left to right with the drone as you're moving from left to right. Now, don't worry, you can correct this if you wanted to by choosing horizon steady over rock steady as our electronic image stabilization method. It's pretty self-explanatory, but this will keep the horizon as straight as possible when flying, mimicking what a three-axis mechanical gimbal would deliver. So normal mode is a great way to get started here with the Avada. It kind of helps you get your feet wet to get you an understanding of what this drone is all about. But once you're ready for a little bit more speed, you can jump into the sport mode that increases our maximum speed to 32 miles an hour. Everything between normal and sport mode is similar, except for that top speed. So the drone will still hover in place. It'll still hold its altitude. It'll still basically fly just like a Mavic, but now with more speed. It's basically double the speed of what you get in normal mode. 30 miles an hour is still nowhere near the top speed of what, say, a Mavic 3 can deliver at 47 miles an hour, or even the larger FPV drone at 60 miles an hour. But for the type of flying that a Cinewhoop is built for, 30 miles an hour almost might seem to be too much at times. When I'm using sport mode to navigate through tight spots, I'm usually off the throttle just a little bit. I'm never gunning it, but it's nice to have that speed for when 
I hit an open area to pick it up a bit. The same thing is also true in regards to the image stabilization here, just as it was in normal. So whether you choose between Rocksteady or Horizon Steady, the video coming off of the SD card will be nice and smooth, but when viewing it through the goggles, it's gonna be a little bit jumpy. So now that we've worked our way through our initial flight modes, the normal and sport mode, the GPS aided flight modes that we're probably very familiar with from say the Mavic 3, the Mini 3, the Air 2S, we're now gonna move into full manual or acro. And while this transition might seem to be a big leap, don't worry, there still are some methods that we can use to kind of ease into the transition. Now I know that I already mentioned it, but after flying with the drone for a little bit in the normal and sport mode, it would be a really good idea to jump on the simulator to get a feel for what it would be like to fly in manual before you actually try it with your own drone. This way, when you flip into manual, you don't panic and crash the drone. Now, before we start flying manual, we need to adjust the tension rod on the backside of the remote controller to loosen the left stick. In order to control your throttle, you'll need to allow the stick to hold its position anywhere along the Y axis. If it constantly recentered and you had to fight against that tension, the drone would be really difficult to control. Using the tool included in the box, you'll want to spin these two screws until the stick loosens to your liking. You'll also want to set your gimbal pitch, which can be done at any time during the flight. When flying in the normal and sport modes, the gimbal will automatically pitch up and down, but in manual, it stays fixed in the position that you set it to. I find myself keeping the pitch between 12 to 15 degrees for most of my flying, but the beauty of flying the Avada is that you can change it from your remote at any time while you're in the air. Now, the final thing that I would adjust is your gain and expo settings. Right out of the gate, the drone feels really sensitive, so I've turned them down to a more manageable number for my flying style. You can play with these until you find something that suits how you prefer to fly the drone. Now, once your remote controller is all set up, your gimbal is in place, you've played around with the different rate and expo settings, and you've put some time in on the simulator, it's now time to jump into flying the Avada in full manual. But don't worry, along the way, we've got some fail safes that will continue to help us. So for example, if you start to get a little uncomfortable, you can press the pause button and at any time the drone will correct itself and come to a hover, which is really helpful in case you're about to crash. Also, you can just kind of like flip up into the normal mode and the drone will still hover. So that's kind of like a similar functionality between those two buttons. And also, if you begin to lose signal, we have an RTH fail safe built in so that as you're flying around in manual, if the drone detects that you're starting to lose too much signal, the drone will automatically come to a hover and it'll return back to you, which is a really nice feature to have. And now remember, like I showed you in the beginning of the video, you'll have to enable manual mode in the settings. And once you do, you can flip your flight mode switch all the way down to the bottom custom button and fly in manual. Your gimbal will move to its set position and a prompt will appear on the screen to move your sticks into a specified position in the green zones. And once you do, it'll flip you into manual. From here, you're off to fly and learn an acro. But remember that normal flight mode is just one switch away. So you can reach up and go back to GPS at any time. The way that I got started flying acro using DJI's FPV drone was flying all the way up to say like 350 feet just in the normal or the sport mode. And then from there, I'd flip into manual, I'd fly the drone down. And then once I got too close to the ground, I'd flip it back to normal, raise my altitude, and then do the same thing over and over again until I got comfortable with the controls when flying an acro. Now, right out of the gate, the drone will have an attitude limit turned on. So as much as you try, the drone will not flip over. It'll stay relatively level. This is an awesome way to start because the way that you can get really messed up is when the drone flips over. If you aren't used to flying manual with the goggles on and all you see is the sky where the ground is supposed to be, you can instantly start to panic. The attitude limit totally alleviates that and it'll keep you right side up. If you wanted to remove the attitude limit to gain even more control over your drone, then you can open the menu by swiping right on the touchpad on the goggles, go to settings, open the remote controller section, scroll over to your gain and expo section, and then toggle the switch at the bottom. When switching out of the attitude limit, a prompt will warn you to put some more time in on the sim before you get started. Now doing this gives you the ability to do flips, dive down to the ground, barrel roll from left to right. It really just gives you more control over your drone, but it's important to work up to this. Using the attitude limit is a fundamental step to getting here so that you can get a grasp of the controls. Get a feel for how the drone reacts to your stick input and then move on to become a better FPV pilot. Now the top speed and manual mode is 60 miles an hour, which is is good to use if you're out in the open. But again, with the exploratory flights that Cinewoops are built for, 60 miles an hour is just a lot for trying to split gaps and maneuver through objects. I personally enjoy using the Rocksteady electronic image stabilization when flying in acro, although using Horizon Steady could be a good choice if you're flying more conservatively lower to the ground. I just think that allowing the horizon to tilt with your drone while you fly makes the video flow really well. And so guys, there we have it. That is how you can go from flying in full GPS flight to full manual flight using the DJI Avada. There's plenty
plenty of steps to go along and learn through the process. So don't rush it. Make sure you get there and feel comfortable so that you don't end up losing your drone to a really nasty crash. Although this thing is fairly rugged, it can definitely take a beating. So that's why I think that this is a good drone to practice with, to learn FPV on over say like the DJI FPV drone that's a little bit more fragile. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you learned anything, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below and leave a like on the video. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.